Hey everybody, welcome back to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. We did that right. <laughs> we no, did that I right. know. We did it right. For it once. great. All right, cool. Uh, so this is the Linux Cast. We talk about Linuxy things most of the time. Other times we just bullshit for about an hour, and that's what we're planning on doing today. We have topics. We're going to go through them one by one as we, you know, do. Uh, but I'm sure we will uh, meander as we also do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Tyler... Other than uh, <laughs> the the normal things, what have you been doing this week? Uh, do we need uh, to have a, an an, inter- an intervention? Is is what I'm hearing? Yes. Um, so my zero AD addiction has gotten uh, to the point now where it is negatively impacting the rest of my life. I am forgetting about obligations that I have. Um, uh, it it's taking up a massive chunk of my time. Um, that being said, I absolutely love it and probably won't stop. I uh, just need to learn how to, you know, become a functional addict, you know? Like, you there just need go. to become an adult. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you just need to set an alarm or something. Dude, you have modern technology. You're not in the wagon yet, mm-hmm. Tyler. <laughs> uh, I know, I know. Well, r- really, in all honesty, uh, even though I knew it was Thursday, I really didn't think of it as Thursday. I was like, I got the day off. I can I can spend the whole day playing Zero AD. It, <laughs> I even sent you a message like, hey, man, you want to play Zero AD? It never once occurred to me like, hey, man, you got the podcast. You sort of got to like do that. Yeah, I messaged you back saying, hey, yeah, I just got home. I need to get food before uh, we do the pod. You never answered me back because you went and automatically and start, started messing around with your women. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> So, uh, so that that <laughs> I probably better not say that. <laughs> I will, okay, I'm gonna say it. Uh, uh, so that's the only so the only way you can mess around with women is in the video game. <laughs> that's the reason why you're so obsessed with yeah. the game. All right, <laughs> that's all right. That's, that was that was very mean. Uh, I, I, I'm still a little no. salty. I was stood up for like a half an hour. It's mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> all right. Yep. Um, so you've been playing Zero Day. I played the tutorial of that, and uh, I, uh, it was fun, uh, but overly complicated for me. But I think I, if I play it a little bit more, uh, which I still haven't had a chance to do, by the way, this week has just been so fucking busy. Uh, we got a new dog, and that's been taking up a, new, uh, a lot of time. Plus, work has just been crazy. So, um, yeah. So for me, I've been messing around with Emacs, and every time I show Emacs on in a video, someone tells you you're doing it wrong. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, last week I was talking about how I preferred to use Emacs in the terminal, and apparently that's the wrong way to use Emacs because you don't get all the features if you use it in the terminal. Um, which in my case, I'd then ask why is there even a terminal version if if it's a stripped down you know, vanilla version of of Emacs, why bother having it in the terminal? Uh, you're just giving me false hope at that point. Uh, exactly. Right? So uh, I, I've been messing around with it slowly, but every time it doesn't work the way I expect it to work, I just immediately go do the thing that I need to do in Vim because I know the key bindings there. So uh, like that, that rising video I did yesterday, people will see I started up an Emacs and started working on it and it didn't paste the way I expected it to paste. Like you, the thing about the Doom Emacs is that the the key bindings are similar to Vim, but they're not exactly the same as Vim. Because like when you're in, in Vim, to paste outside of from a clipboard outside of Vim, you have to do Control Shift V, like you do in a normal terminal, right? But mm-hmm. in Emacs, Control Shift V does something completely different. It's just P, and I keep forgetting that. Um, so I went through and kept trying to figure out how why the colors weren't changing, and uh, it just <laughs> it's because I wasn't pasting correctly, and I I got pissed off and threw a fit and just went to Vim. And I did the rest of the video in Vim. So I got a couple messages and comments about that, like you you were doing it wrong. Well, yeah, I know I was doing it wrong, but the way it was being done is stupid. Um, I'm <laughs> like I understand technically P is a better way of pasting than Control Shift V, but I've been using Control Shift V to paste in a terminal for. Ever. Ever. Right? Yeah. And that's just the way you do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah. I, I mean, so that that has been an experience. My, I have not been able to get into org mode or org roam yet. Those are the two things I'm going to check out before I stop this stupid experiment. 
because uh, I, I, I'm hoping that those two grab my attention and like, oh, these are really good. This is why you use Emacs because so far I haven't found a good reason to use Emacs. Yeah, so it just Vim's better. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so I've also been I've been scripting up, up a storm. I'm this close to being able to finish the the rice changer script that I've been doing. Oh man. So I ran into a problem. I don't know if I talked about this last week or not, but what I wanted to do and I had it working was that I I ran I had a an array that listed out all the uh, choices for rices and then it ran that through Rofi and then you took the choice and then you know applied the changes the problem is with DWM you have to build it so every time you change make a change to one of the config files you have to build it and you can't do that from Rofi because you need pseudo privileges so <laughs> uh, I can't you, if, if you could build DWM or ST or any of those things without using pseudo privileges that would be the way I'd be doing it because it'd be really cool. Just hit a key binding, Rofi mm -hmm. comes up or D menu comes up, select the rice you want, and it changes. That was my mm -hmm. ideal, but it's just not going to work that way because of that stupid suit of privileges. Uh, so that, instead, of what I'm going to do is you, it's going to be something you're going to have to run from a terminal uh, with options. So you'd, you'd run the terminal name and then you'd put the option of the rice that you want after it, and then it would well, then change. Could. Could you not do it? I mean, there should be a way of, um, you know, doing it from D menu and having it to where when you need the pseudo privileges, it just loads up a policy kit. Like, and see, you enter I, in. I thought that that I don't, but I don't know anything about how to use a policy kit. Like, I don't know how to get how to spawn that uh, service. You know right I mean? there with you. Like yeah, I have no clue I have how to no do idea. that because that's what I thought too. Was like, it could be really cool if it would just you know you select a rice and then policy the poll kit you know thing comes up and you I type in your password. But I don't know how to do that. I mean, maybe I can do some research and figure out how to do that. It'd be really cool because I have that 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 script is written like it's done. It's just it won't work because you need the pseudo privileges. Um, yeah. So. Anyways, that that's basically what I've been doing. I've also been slowly learning some more about ButterFS because I want to do a video on it because uh, I think it's really cool and I'm going to argue that it should really be the default on Linux now because it's just, it's so good. Like every time, mm -hmm. like I haven't been forced to use it yet, but every time, every little feature that I discover about it just makes me think like, this is the way Linux should work. Like ext4 has been good for many 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 years uh, but it's time to move on to the next thing butterfest is the future i think uh, mm -hmm. and it's snapshots are amazing yeah they're like, really good and i don't know why ubuntu has chosen zfs uh, as an alternative it's like why do you want to be different just choose butterfest it's better mm -hmm. all right anyway so that is uh uh, that section there we can move on to the contact information let's see if i can do this without fucking it up unlikely <laughs> Anyways, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at the LinuxCast. You can subscribe to all of our feeds and stuff like that, the LinuxCast.org. Uh, there you'll find uh, links to all the places where you can subscribe to the audio version, as well as a link to the YouTube to the YouTube page. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us via email, email at the LinuxCast.org is where you can do that. I do actually get those emails. Uh, whether or not I respond will mostly depend on what your email actually is about. If you're emailing me about... I don't know, some stupid thing about how you're going to make my YouTube channel the next PewDiePie. I'm not going to mm -hmm. respond to you because we all know that that's, uh, we already know that my channel is better than PewDiePie. I'm just, I mean, it's true. <laughs> Finally, someone just came out and said it. <laughs> also, that light is so going to fall. Uh, <laughs> like it's, now it's hanging by a fucking thread. Uh, yeah, that's great. That's great news. Anyways, uh, you can also subscribe to Tyler's channel on YouTube and Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description and in the show notes if you need to do, if you haven't already, seriously, he's like 50 away from 1,000. Like 50 mm -hmm. away from a thousand and we're going to get him there. Like by the end of the year, Tyler's going to be at a thousand or we're going to die trying. Go subscribe to Tyler's channel. He's Thank zany, you guys. He's zany online. Uh, and you can subscribe to our channel on the YouTube by going to youtube.com slash Linux cast. That wasn't bad. Also, uh, 
I'm just looking at that light like it's gonna. It's definitely gonna fall. All right. Anyway, I'm uh, just waiting for the crash. Like it's gonna happen. It's like it's now. It's literally dangling. Uh, that. So I I bought this double sided tape. I don't know if you can see this or not. And it is sticky. Like it will stick to your fingers from the side. But apparently, it's not sticky enough to hold that up. So that was a waste of like eight bucks. All right. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> uh, whatever. It's okay. Uh, every week, Tyler and I find news or news-like things in the case of sometimes, and uh, we talk about those things. Usually, this is the part of the show where we uh, diverge from what we should be talking about into uh, other things. So, Tyler, what is your news link of the week? Mine is the uh, – it's sort of a tutorial guide, but it's um, about the new – how to essentially get uh, a new Linux kernel installed on your Ubuntu system, which um, I've found out that new guides and stuff like this um, that come out are apparently very popular and, like, extremely helpful inside of the, like, Ubuntu community – I did not know how many I it surprises me. I've recently found out that a lot of people who use Ubuntu update the kernel like just either they do it themselves like TFL does that. He updates the kernel himself. A few other people like they all manually update the kernel themselves or, you know, follow a guide like this. So, um, you know, if you are an Ubuntu user, apparently it's very popular running Ubuntu with a more up-to-date kernel, which obviously makes sense. You're going to get much better stuff, like, you know, uh, better driver support, hardware support, all that. But I I don't know. If it, I, again, you do say this is where we go off on tangents. M- my question to you would be, would if you're going to install Ubuntu, would you actually update the kernel? Uh, I never have, um, in the, but you remember, i I think the longest I've ever run Ubuntu is probably for like two weeks. Uh, so I don't think I've ever stuck around on an Ubuntu install long enough to have to actually, ins- you know, update the kernel. Now I have done, have to do it on Arch, but that's just, you know, I mean, that's normal. I mean, you get three updates a week <laughs> yeah, for, for, yeah. for Arch. So uh, n- would I if I were on Ubuntu? Probably not, because the way I look at Ubuntu is that you use that because it doesn't get kernel updates. Like if yeah, you know, what I mean that that's the way I look at it. It's like you wanted that thing to be as stable as possible, and using the newest kernel is just going to cause you problems. Or you would yeah, think, like right? yeah, I mean, where it, where it's at least less stable than running an older one that just works. You know, like. Yeah, you don't get as many features, but that's sort of the whole idea is that it's rock solid stable. Like I, it's very weird to me. But yes, apparently this is very popular. So look, I don't think we can take guy. Terminal for Life as an example of how that would work for other people because no, no, no. But I have talked to a lot of others, and apparently there is quite a few graphical user inter like or GUIs for updating your kernel in Ubuntu. Don't, uh, it does not make any sense to me, but well, teach I their mean, own. Apparently, that's something people want to do, but like I said, then I would question why you want to use Ubuntu in the first place. Exactly. Uh, because, like I said, that'd be, I mean, the reason why you use Ubuntu is because it's it's stable. Uh, it's not going to get, I mean, I don't know, it's just really weird. But then again, maybe you prefer Apt. I mean, maybe that's the reason why you prefer Apt as the package manager or. Uh, maybe you really, really like snaps, and you like first party support for snaps. I mean, <laughs> it, it, all right. Uh, there goes the light. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, did the light cut off? Right oh. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with. It. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, so well, yeah. you knew it was gonna happen eventually. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. Anyways, um, I don't remember. I don't remember what I was saying. So I'm surprised I didn't. In in my haste to get to the light, unplug the fucking microphone. Uh, <laughs> that would have just been uh, uh, gravy on top of everything else the way it ha- has. So um, 
Yeah, so I. Well, you were talking about snaps. Yeah, so I, oh yeah, that's what I wanted. If there's somebody out there who really, really likes snaps, I want to meet you and interview you. Uh, to talk to Dylan. Talk to Dylan. Oh, we can't talk to Dylan. Uh, that man uses <laughs> nano. Okay. <laughs> As a snap. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we we can't. He and I would not get along for very long. <laughs> Well, if you're asking for somebody who loves snaps, he loves snaps enough to run nano vim. He was trying to convince me that that having your init system as a snap would be a great thing. I don't think that it's even possible. Well, it's stupid. Why would you contain it? Why would you try to sandbox your init system? It needs to start services. It what? How? I- like, <laughs> How would that even work? Because the, the, it couldn't. Like, like, like by definition, your init system has to breach that container wall like all the time. So exactly, how would it, I don't like I'm not the most technical person in the world, but I don't think that that would be possible. Uh, at least not. Okay. He also uses GNOME. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, enough said. All right. Anyways, uh, so. Uh, my news link, uh, link news link of the week. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, anyways, the is that Brave has switched from Google to its default search engine uh, by default, and I don't. I was listening to a couple other Linux podcasts, and people were like, "This is shocking news!" Like, how is this shocking news? Of course, they were going to switch. That's the reason why they did Brave browser in the first place. Or the Brave no. search in the first place, I mean, so that they could use it and get away from Google. I mean, that's of course they were gonna do this. I mean, how stupid can you get? <laughs> of course yeah. they were. Um, so I'm surprised it wasn't default out of the gate. Well, I mean, I think they wanted to get it out of beta first, uh, yeah. but it just doesn't surprise me at all. And the thing is, you still use Brave search as your default. I know you did for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I I did for a bit while I was still using your cute browser config because I was just you know too lazy to change it. But then eventually I just went back to Google because like mm. it's, that's the reason why I keep going from um, I keep going from uh, DuckDuckGo. Like every once in a while I like, I'll feel guilty about not using an open source you know search engine or a, a you know a privacy respecting search engine at least. So I'll go switch to DuckDuckGo and I'll get pissed off at it oh after like a couple weeks because it just <laughs> It keeps forcing me to use the bang system to get to, to Google anyway, so I just be like, fuck this, I'm just gonna use Google. So um So yeah, uh, I just uh, Google's too good. You know what I mean? It's just it <laughs> really is. It's just too good at search engine. Like other things I can understand, you know, that you don't want to use it, but for me, the search engine their results are always good. You know, it, hard, hardly ever do you go to Google, search for something, and then not find what you need. And yeah. you can't say that about uh, DuckDuckGo or Brave. Um, although I, I don't think I gave Brave enough credit because they pull a lot of stuff from Google as well. So maybe yeah. they'd be pretty good. Brave is far, far better than DuckDuckGo. Um, but I will say here on Firefox, I'm using DuckDuckGo um, just in, in Cute Browser. Brave is my default. Yeah, DuckDuckGo does use Bing, uh, which explains a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Because Microsoft can't make anything good. I mean, no, they can't. Well, like, I, I, I take that back. They can make things good, but when when they're only using the work of others, like they, they can make a good browser when they just put a skin over Chromium. Yeah, That's it. Or, right. I mean, GitHub is still good, but they're working on it, making it worse. Well, I mean, they, they, they just bought it. And yeah. That's it. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so that was my news link of the week. So moving on to the main topic at four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I keep looking at the time. Like, man, why, why are we running so late? That's uh, because somebody had to play Euro AD. Actually, mm-hmm. on the Zero AD, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what I was going to do is pop into your uh, because you, you had your chat. You're like you were in a, a VC there. I was going to pop in and say, "Hey, yo, Tyler, <laughs> podcast." You should have. Why well, wouldn't want to be rude? <laughs> I was the one being rude. I was I was bailing on you. <laughs> And next time I'll do that, I was like, hey, asshole. <laughs> well, there won't be a next time, but that's a whole other topic. <laughs> 
tell that the next time you're playing with your women. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, moving on I, to the... <laughs> no, go ahead. I was just going to move on to the main topic before we <laughs> just keep doing this for the next half an hour. Uh, so, Tyler, most underrated Linux distribution. Which one uh, do you think doesn't get enough love? Um... Now, this is just completely because um, I'm using it. This is definitely biased and impartial or non-impartial. Um, KDE Neon. Um, haven't, I, I've neglected it for a long time. Not really, not really checked out or anything. Um, haven't really thought much of it because, I mean, when you look into it, it it's not something that sounds super appealing. Um it doesn't sound very special. It's just KDE. It's the latest from KDE on top of an, an a stable Ubuntu base. That's it. However, with that being said, it is the best experience. It, it, it has made me love KDE more than I've ever liked it before. Um, not and also it is a smooth experience man i have it on my desktop and my laptop and if anyone's kept up with like my channel for quite a while like um it's a dell g5 laptop it's an all amd laptop it has a, a ryzen apu in it and a dedicated like rx graphics card and linux typically does not play nice on it over here, this is the only stable distribution where everything works with a card. Um, it, it just everything works. I don't even have any pulse audio issues here. Like it doesn't do any weird mic switching. I don't have to like replug in my microphone or ensure that I don't boot up without my microphone plugged in. None of that weirdness. It everything just works. It's beautiful and snappy which is great so katie neon check it out it's pretty great all right so for those of you who are patrons you'll know that this topic has been done before but by me solo because i deleted that video but the audio is fine so that's been up for patrons for a couple weeks but i wanted to talk about this with tyler because uh i thought we'd have an interesting discussion so <laughs> For me, I have a couple answers to this question, and the, they're kind of surprising answers because you'd think that I'd say Arco or Garuda or something like that, but I don't think that that's mm -hmm. true because I think a lot of people like Arco and Garuda. Those are fairly popular Arch spinoffs, mm -hmm. so I wasn't going to choose one of those because I don't think that they're really underrated. I think the people who want to use Arco or Garuda use Arco or Garuda. Uh, or they use Manjaro or something like that, similar like that. Uh, so, for me, my answer was Sparky Linux. And I really, really like Sparky. So, if you don't know what Sparky is, Sparky is basically Debian. It's Debian stable. I think they have an unstable version as well, but the one I tried was the Debian stable version. And it's basically just Debian. It's like a minimal install of Debian, but with... Uh, they have four ISOs. They're all on the front page, so you don't have to worry about actually finding the ISO. Uh, and they use the Calamari's installer. It's really easy to install, really stable, has access to all the Debian repositories out of the box, so you don't have to worry about enabling uh, backports and stuff like that. It's just It just works. It's really good. Um, Sparky really impressed me when I tried it. Now, that was my answer when I did that solo podcast, and... Uh, I still really like Sparky, but uh, since that time, I've taken another look at MX Linux. Now, this is another Debian-based distro, and they uh, it's really uh, it really surprised me because I looked at it before when I first started the channel, and I remember really liking it, but this time it just really kind of hit something for me because they have a ton of tools. They have a, a MX tweak tool that has a ton of stuff in it and they've gone through and just made a very neat uh like beginner friendly distribution that has a ton of tools that help you like they have a gui for changing your bash rc 
Did you know that? Oh, like they really? Have a, they have a GUI you can go through and you can change your prompt. You can go through and add aliases. You can go through and do pretty much anything you could do in a Bash RC, but it's a GUI. Like it's the weirdest tool that has ever existed, uh, and I would never use it because I would just you know open up Vim and open up Bash RC. But for those people who have never, they don't know what a Bash RC is or how they That's go about. That's incredible. You know, changing your prompt or whatever. Because I mean, if you have to change your prompt in Bash, and normally you have to go through and you have to know the syntax of how to do it. And with this tool, you can go through and not only create a prompt, but you can save that prompt for ages for later. Like if you have multiple prompts you want to use, you can switch between them in a GUI way. Just it's just in a list. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, so I don't think that you could really qual. I don't know if you can qualify MX as an underrated distro because I mean a lot of people use it. But I really do think it's very good, and uh, I I think if you're if you're looking for a Debian based distro, MX or Spark, you're probably, um, you know, <laughs> probably the two of the best. Deb I, if you're going to use Debian, use one of those two. Now, if you're not, look I'm going to have a third answer. Damn it, <laughs> there's a third <laughs> answer. Uh, another one that really impressed me was was Gecko Linux. Now. The thing about Gecko Lynx is that it's OpenSUSE based. And you're like, wait a minute, there are OpenSUSE based distros? There is there uh -huh. are open so open SUSE based distros, and one of them is called Gecko Linux. Now it's really good. Now it has the same some of the same issues that OpenSUSE has, but uh it was actually very stable and it fixed a few of the things that OpenSUSE had problems with. And it's called Gecko Linux, so it has a cool name. So um I'm going to read your name, whether you like it or not. The Dyke who likes, likes those swords. Thanks for the super chat. Mm -hmm. Do you use NVIM tree? Uh, also love your videos. Well, thank you for liking the videos. Uh, I NVIM tree. I don't, is that like the, the built in file manager for them? I don't know. I use nerd tree for a file manager, um, but I'm not sure I, what I, NVIM tree is. I think NVIM tree is like the, the file like picker file browser for um NeoVim, I think. Yeah. It, it might also just be a plugin for regular Vim. I know that um Vim has like a built in file picker that's called N N Nerd Tree N New Tree or something. I don't know. It's it's called something really weird. Uh but I never use it because I prefer Nerd Tree, so um yeah. No, yeah, same. Nerd Tree's fantastic. It's just it's just good, you know. I was like yesterday. I was going through and opening up uh, files while I was scripting, and I was using colon e to open. I was like, and then typing out the full path. I was like, wait a minute, why am I doing this? Like, I have a file manager inside Vim. It was it, it, it was dumb. Anyways, it just sometimes I forget about. Sometimes I forget it's there. Anyways, thanks for the super chat there. Uh, I do appreciate that. I don't get super chats uh very often so i have literally no clue <laughs> what to do with them <laughs> half the time yeah so uh, i do appreciate that anyways um yeah so th those are my answers for the 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 most uh, underrated distro but i i, I think some of them are probably kind of cop-outs because like sparky is like the only one there that's kind of like a really underrated distro um <laughs> like that hardly anyone uses so MX is really popular, as far as I know, but I think that it could be even more popular. It's really good. Those tools, man. Yeah. Like, like I, if I, I, and I think somebody told me this, whether or not it's true. I think MX and Spark. I think MX at least doesn't use System D, but I, I don't know if that person was trolling me or not. So it's possible that it could be wrong. Well, I didn't I mean, notice. I didn't notice it because then who, who the hell interacts with their init system? Exactly. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> Like I did that, so I did that poll last week, right? I said I was going to do a poll of who who's interacted, who, it, how often do you interact with your internet system? And I had some interesting answers. So, like a lot of people use System D to do to re, to do reboots and stuff like that with their, on their system. So they interact with it every day. Um, and it's it. I think that if you're running a system based distro, a System D based distro, and you go into your terminal and hit shut down now, what you're technically doing is interacting with System D. I think that that's the case, because uh, I think shutdown is just an alias to uh, a, a system service or something. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so Melo says systemd does not use systemd. Okay, 
So, so that person did not troll me. That's good. Um, but like I said, I didn't notice it because, I mean, I don't interact with... I mean, I didn't go through and start up services or something like that. That'd be the only time I'd interact with the, uh, the, you know, the NS system. So I, I wouldn't even have noticed. Yeah. Well, I mean, but the thing about it is, is like, I messed around with Run It, Open RC, and System D, and like, f first off, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's an init system. Two, they all work. So who cares? And the third one is, is as soon as you worked with them all. Who cares? They all have the same sort of idea. They just go about starting a service a different way. <clears throat> it's just, it, who cares? Like, they all work. Yeah, I'm not going to pick a distro because it uses one particular init system. I mean, you'd you'd have you have to have a very specific uh, gripe against System D in order to hate it. Otherwise, I mean, I mean, there has to be something that I mean, it has to have kidnapped your baby or. Or, or yeah. burnt your house down or something for you to dislike it because, <laughs> because otherwise uh, I, I like I could understand like if you're a like an IT administrator or you're a, a programmer of some kind and you're constantly interacting with it and maybe it has bugs or something you've noticed or it doesn't work in a way that you want to want it to work I can understand not liking it but for the mass, vast majority of normies out there who uh, even if you use it to sh to shut down your computer, you probably don't know you're using it to shut down your computer. Um, so, I mean, chances are you don't care about System D. So, uh, and that's probably the way it should be. Now, you can. The other side of the argument is that well, it's kind of become a standard, and every distribution uses it, and that's not great for Linux. We should, uh, Linux is the place where we should have nine different ways of doing things, and that's. Just, I mean. Um, my response to that is, well, we have nine different ways of doing an init system. We have 12 different init systems, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, those things exist. They are not popular for reasons because, like, the thing about OpenRC and running all those things, they don't do everything System D does, not even close. System D is, is a suite of applications that does more than just being an init system. Like it has an init system inside of it, but it has a ton of other things that it does. So when you go through and use something like Run It, which is just an init system, that's all Run It is. Uh, you have to have other things to do the stuff that other that System D does, you know, outside of that. Uh, yeah. If if you want those things to you know work, so uh, the, just because you know you're using a non System D distro doesn't you know. Uh, mean that you have to you, you can't it doesn't mean that you, you get away with not doing those other things the system does also the th here, here's the thing that bothers me tyler is that the people who use non-system d distros are so proud about the fact that they don't use system d like no. um, you're the arch people all over again but for an init system Okay, like I, I don't I use run it by the way, you know, I think, <laughs> I, think like, I, 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 I don't care. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I don't care what an NS system you good for you, man. I, I, I'm so happy that you found an NS system that you like. Uh, but for me, I interact with the NS system so rarely that I couldn't care what NS system I'm using as long as it works. Like literally, that's what I want to have happen. I want my computer to turn on in the morning and I want to get to my websites and open up, you know, OBS and do this stuff. That's I, I want it to work. If it works, I don't give a crap. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. I maybe I'm, you know, uh, naive or something, thinking that things don't matter. But I don't think it matters. No, I mean, a lot of those people treat uh, System D like it's a piece of malware or it's like somehow malicious. It's like they, it, it's just an init system. It's not dangerous. It's not scary. It it doesn't matter if you like something like I really like Run It, but I can't I can't really use Run It for reasons. But it, I really like it. So I mean, if you prefer another Init system, that's awesome. You know, just yeah. enjoy what you like. But I, I I don't understand the like hatred and the like pr like the pride that some people get for yeah. being like I'm I'm not a system D user. Yeah, I mean, they look down on the system D people, like, whatever. I mean, I can understand not liking it because it's controlled by a corporation. Like, it's it's developed by Red Hat, like Gnome, and like uh, uh, Xorg, and Wayland, and Pipewire. 
Like Red Hat, if they decided to take everything proprietary, Linux would be screwed. So, mm -hmm. but we, we've known that forever, right? We've known that forever, and uh, it's probably never going to happen. But you know, even if it does, we could still fork the stuff if we had to. So, I mean, I can understand, I can understand that argument, but I don't think, I mean, if we're so anti-corporation backing open source software, uh, Linux should be done for because uh, I hate to break it to these people, but we need those corporations to invest in open source software. Otherwise, uh, Pipewire is never going to get fixed or Wayland's mm -hmm. never going to become mainstream or uh, snaps are never going to get better, you know, and what will Dylan do then? You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so, weird. It, it, it's almost like for any industry to succeed, there needs to be money being put into it. It's a weird thing, isn't it? Wow. Right? Because yeah, I, I, I hate to break it again to you, but uh, Linux, the people who use Linux, most of them cheap bastards, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't want to spend any money. Uh, the, I mean, I, and it's just the the way it is sometimes, and that's okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I can't claim any moral high ground and say, well, I've put twenty thousand dollars in the last year into open source software because that's not true. <laughs> like <laughs> I su I support Bitwarden, I support Arco Linux. I've given them maybe thirty bucks over the last year, so you know mm -hmm. I, I I'm a cheap skate just along with everybody else. But you can't if you want Linux to be as successful as it is now. Not not even talking about making it more successful have to have some corporate, you know, backing. Um, yeah. And I, I think that if we had to have corporate backing, Red Hat and uh, Canonical are probably, you know, th the best evil that we could possibly have because it could be worse. It could be Microsoft. It could be Google mm -hmm. uh, being the biggest open source software. And we know that they don't actually care about open source. At least Canonical yeah. and Red Hat seem to do so. Yeah. Well, but I mean, the, the scary part is, is, well, I mean, it's not scary, but again, money's got to come from somewhere. And these are the people with the most money, but the evil corporations are the ones who fund the not so evil co corporations. So it, it, we, we live in a very weird world. It's yeah. not black and white like people would like it to be. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It's just. You get to a point where some of the Linux community just kind of doesn't. They they want it to be an ideal place where everything's open and there's no corporate influence and it's just uh, would we like to live in that in that kind of world maybe but Linux would be a lot smaller it'd be a lot more broken than it is today I guarantee it like it just yeah. would like well I mean I mean people talk I mean exactly what you're talking about people don't want corporations involved look if Valve never put any interest in Linux. I don't know that I would be using I because I just I wouldn't be able to play any games that I wanted to play on Linux. So I wouldn't have even started playing around with it, trying it out. It would just be that weird, obscure thing that like I offhand know about, but, you know, don't really play with. Um, so. and that's, a, that's a really good point because and, it, and it's so true. I mean, like if, if Valve decided today that they didn't want to do Linux anymore, We'd be screwed because there's yeah the vast a lot of people would leave. Like there'd be no Linux games other than Zero AD. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that'd be the only game. Like when, Tyler would be like, "I'll be fine. <laughs> like I'm good now. That's the only game I need." <laughs> <laughs> My addiction would be like, "Good, yes." <laughs> like I chose a good one, but for everybody else who wants to play literally anything else, I mean. I mean, I don't want to besmirch the open source developers who do open source games on Linux because there are a lot of good ones. Zero AD is out there. Tux Cart's out there. I mean, there's several, you know, Xenotic or whatever it is, mm -hmm. really good games that are open source and well-developed and that stuff. But those are kind of it. I mean, if you want a AAA game, the only way you're playing that is thanks to a large corporation. Like, that's, mm -hmm. It's just the sad fact of it. And uh, even if... Like, like, I'm sure that the developers and stuff like that outside, outside like, because, like, Wine existed before, you know, seems like Wine was here, but Wine wouldn't be where it is now without backing from Steam, because Steam does a lot of stuff nope. that puts upstream into, into Wine. Uh, so, I'm not saying all corporations are good. <laughs> we know mm -hmm. that that's not true, uh, not even close to being true, but we can't be so, you know, blind as to say, 
uh, you know, corporations shouldn't take part in open source software because we'd be screwed if the, if that came to pass. Yeah. Gaming would be and, done. I mean, and, so and if the evil corporations want to give us money, we'd be stupid not to take it. Right. Yes, yeah. indeed. Like, well, I, especially seeing how we as a community aren't willing to or even able to put that kind of money forth to do the development work ourselves. I mean, it, it, we, we've seen time and time again pure open source projects put out pleas for money and then just not get enough to be able to yep. go forth because they can't go through and you know, get enough money to, you know, pay their bills and feed their families. They have to go get a job. Um, mm -hmm. That's the reason why most open source projects are done as side projects. Yep. You know? um, and there are some open source projects that can't be side projects, like Firefox. Uh, like, look, look, let's be real. As dumb as Mozilla can be, if it wasn't for Google, we wouldn't have the best open source browser we have. Yeah. Just well, saying. <laughs> uh, Mozilla is a completely different argument for me because I think that they could do what they do with a lot less money, mostly because they, you know, pay their CEO way too much. But you're entirely mm -hmm. right that they would need money from someplace, and it's painfully obvious that it's not going to come from their community. Yeah. Well, you know Mozilla I mean? is a weird beast because t I completely agree with you. I think right now they could afford to not uh, to not be getting that money, but Firefox would not be competitive and where it is now and in the position to not need that money without Google's help to get there or Google's money to get there. Yeah. That's more accurate. We have gone on a huge tangent here. Like we started here and then we ended up all the way over here. <laughs> I, I don't even know how we got there. <laughs> like, like that was the weirdest tangent ever. It was great. Um, yes, we were, it was. We were talking about most underrated Linux distros. Um, so, what I one last thing on this is that. Uh, we could have come up with any number of answers for this because there are thousands of Linux distributions out there. Um, it's just, I mean, I come up, I came up with, I, I found another one uh, the other day call or today that I'm going to make a video on called Voyager Linux. It's based on Ubuntu 21.10. It looks like GNOME to me, but I don't know actually much about it, but I'm going to do another WTF video on it. But I was like, it's GNOME. You'll love it. I'm sure it's going to be fan. I'm, but the thing is, you know, that's just another example. Like, there's so many Linux distributions out there, and you can make the argument whether or not that is good or bad for Linux. Like, too much choice is maybe a bad thing, or maybe too much choice is a good thing, you know, w w one way or another. But I think, just down, just coming to, to the close, that it's kind of awesome. You know, it just, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's really cool. I mean, without so many distros... I wouldn't have a channel mm -hmm. because you yeah. know, what, 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 if all we had was Ubuntu or Fedora, I mean, it'd be, it'd be so boring, be dude. Boring, man. Huh? Yeah. Tyler has well, made streams looking at weird Linux distros, like, and he came. He, mm -hmm. what was that Ubuntu CE or whatever? And uh, there's Christian Edition. There's dude. There's Apartheid Linux for literally. If you're a neo Nazi, there's a Linux mm -hmm. distro for you. If th there's political distributions, there's state distributions, like government distribution. There is a Linux distribution for any type of person. Out you can be the weirdest person out there, and, and in the smallest minority. And there's a Linux distro for you. That's why I crack up at people who tell you or t tell others that I can't use Linux because it doesn't work for me. You mean to tell me that out of the thousands of distros out there, not one works for you? Come on now. Come on. You just haven't found it yet. Okay. In, in, the, in the comments, Kelsey has, has called me out for calling it GNOME. Okay, so let me let, let me explain. Let, let's get real here for a second. It is pronounced GNOME for a reason, because GNOME is an acronym. Okay, and if we can. I'm gonna open up Wikipedia here, because every we all know that Wikipedia is the best place, and we're gonna search for GNOME, and we're gonna just we're just gonna go. Uh, of course. Uh, 
Gnome actually, you know, takes you to Gnomes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it stands for the GNU Network Object Model Environment. Now, it no longer actually stands for that, but when it first started, that's what it was called, and it, that's what it was. That's what it stood for. That's why it's called Gnome, just like GNU is pronounced GNU. Okay, so that's why I, we pronounce it Gnome. Now, if you do pronounce it with a silent G, that's fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. You're not doing anything wrong. Uh, but don't call out other people for saying Gnome because we are actually pronouncing it the way it used to be pronounced. Okay. Now that I've schooled the chat. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. Because I, I keep getting... I, I got a... Th that, in that video I did where I used Gnome for a week, I, I, I got like five comments saying, you're saying it wrong. Uh, like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Just like, like, no, I'm not. Okay. Uh, there, there are many things that I say. Like, I butcher people's names all the time. Like, I have a new uh, YouTube member. His or her uh, uh, name. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna slaughter it. It's gonna be it, the next time I have to say it. In fact, I'll pro it'll probably be at the end of this video. I, it's going to be embarrassing for both me and the new member. But I. You know, but Gnome, I know how to pronounce that. Now, somebody also said that I was saying Open Sousa wrong. Is it Open Sousa or Open Sous? Because somebody it's said Open it was, Sousa. That's what I thought. That's the way I've always said it. But apparently, Open Sous is the way they're supposed to pronounce it. I don't know. I thought it was Open Sousa. Same. Um. So, uh, some of the pronunciations of of things are weird. So, like, if you use Ubuntu Ubuntu Mate, it's Mate. It's it's that's the way they. Do I love it when people call it mate. What what, what is this mate? It's like yeah, oh, to, the, to this day, every once in a while, Joe Collins will, will uh, pronounce it mate. Uh, like, he, but he knows it's mate. Like, and, and he always um, he always talks about his uh, audience because apparently his audience gets pissed off over how he pronounces it every once in a while too. So, uh, yeah, uh, it it is mate. It's named it's named after a South American drink or something. I don't. It's it, it's weird. Uh, but people no, it, uh, it's it's named after after yerba mate um i i used to drink it it's it's a fantastic alternative cut to coffee um way yeah. off topic there but yeah, there you, you go that's you what it's named after you, you say so bro uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyways uh, uh okay so we went from here <laughs> over here <laughs> and now we're back there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, that, anything left to say on most underrated distro uh, before we <laughs> that was where we started. <laughs> okay, uh, so every week Tyler and I scour the interwebs for uh, apps, picks, things that we can share with you that we think are awesome. So we call them apps of the week. Sometimes they're picks of the week. Sometimes they're tips of the week. Uh, so Tyler, what is your thing of the week? Mine is LSD. I believe we've talked about it. Um, I don't know if we uh, t have talked about it in a previous episode of the podcast, maybe. Um, but uh, I know I've talked about it on my channel. I use it a lot. It's amazing. Um, so, again, if you're someone who uses the term a lot, which, like, let's be honest, if you're watching this, most likely you do, Um LS Deluxe or LSD is it's just your regular LS command, but it got night. It cleans it up. It makes it look much cleaner. It it adds color to it uh, as well as gives things icons. It it just makes using and uh, managing files and just in general your your actual computer inside of your terminal. It, it just makes it look much nicer. And if we're being honest, uh, a lot of us like to neglect aesthetics when it comes to our computers or indulge. If you're someone who neglects the aesthetic of your computer, look, it's super simple to install. If you if it's not in your uh, distro's repository, you can easily install it with pip. Um, it, it's really not that hard and make make your terminal life awesome okay use what, lsd what's the difference between this and exa um i honestly can't answer that because i've never used exa okay so i'm going to try to share my screen here this is probably going to break something uh, but if i go into a terminal and you're not going to be able to see this tyler 
but everybody else will be on the stream. If I do an LS here, which I have alias to EXA, uh, so I I'm interested to find out. I'm going to have to try that because I'd love to know what the uh, difference is between those two. Um, because EXA basically does everything you're talking about, um, but with more, I don't know, it looks even nicer, I, for, at least from the screenshot that I saw. Um, anyways, so that's cool. I, actually, LSD looks very similar because I, I do have the stream loaded, loaded up so I can see it. It looks very similar to that. No, does it? Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, they're probably exactly the same. Of course, one of them's probably written in Rust because, of course. I mean, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyways, so that is that's awesome. So my so my pick of the week is the most self-serving, selfish piece of uh, thing I've ever done. So this is a script that I wrote called Al Changer. Now I'm a horrible namer of scripts. I can't help it. But basically, what this script will do, and I did a video on this, but uh, this script, if you run this script via key binding or in the terminal or whatever, will bring up Brophy and allow you to change your alacrity uh, theme between four or five different themes. Like, actually, eight different themes. And um, it's really cool. So, uh, I've, That's awesome. I've been using this now for a couple days, and I've switched back and forth between the Monokai uh, Pro th Rice I did yesterday to Grovebox to... Uh, back to Dracula and it's just a matter of a key binding and it'll change my alacrity theme to those things and it's really good. Now you do have in, in order for this to work you have to have um, my alacrity config in order to get it to work because you have to have alacrity config set up in a certain way in order to do it but uh, yeah that is um, uh, Al Changer. I'm horrible at naming things. <laughs> I got this <laughs> really bad but uh, it's a really cool script. I, I do need to go through and see if I can go through and um make that horrendous uh, if statement a little bit, you know, better. Because, you know, it's just if elif, if elif, if elif, you know? Yeah. You know? But it works. Uh, I, I've never proclaimed to be the best bash scripter in the world. Uh, everybody knows that I'm a complete noob when it comes to this, but uh, it does work. So that is my uh, pick of the week. So uh, I think that is it for us, and it is almost five o'clock in the fucking afternoon uh so we're not gonna we're not gonna do a dedicated uh question and answer session this time normally we try to fit that in but we won't do that this time so if you have questions you can leave them in the comments of the video uh when it goes up tomorrow now the way this works if you are uh for whatever reason you're just tuning in and you want to go back and watch this uh don't leave this page just go ahead and scrub all the way back to the beginning and watch it uh, once you navigate away, the video will go away because it's going to go unlisted after this because I'm very picky when it comes to views, and I want them all in one place. Uh, I, my OCD just acts right up if they're split. Like last week, we got the same amount of views that we always did, but we only got 500 on the edited version and 300 on the other, and it's the same amount as always, but they were split, and it drove me crazy, and I was like, ah, <laughs> the whole week. <sighs> yeah. So that is definitely... Uh, so this video will go unlisted once we stop recording. But if you need to keep watching it, just stay on the page. Don't reload. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the way that works. Uh, and usually I try to remember to actually link to this recording in the record in the edited version. That way if you want to watch the chat. Because there was a lot of chat this time. Uh, we had a peak of 50 people watching at the same time. <laughs> Holy like, crap, wow. <laughs> like, we appreciate everybody who comes watching. We record this live every Thursday around 3 p.m. Eastern time if somebody's not off playing Zero AD when they should be doing other things. I'm not going to name names, Tyler. Um, <laughs> uh, so if you want to watch live Thursday, 3 o'clock Eastern time, that's 2 p.m. Central time. Do the math for the rest of the, the, the time zones. I'm much too lazy to do that. Uh, before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons, uh, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Knife Tool, Steve A, Mar uh, Marshall, Mit Marshall, <laughs> Mitchell, Art Center, uh, uh, the new guy, uh, Am Am Amate Amateus Banerjee. Amateus Banerjee, I, I apologize for butchering your name. Thanks for the being a YouTube member. Welcome to the madness. I will... Um, I 
um, again, sorry about butchering your name. Uh, Merrick, Camp Joshua Lee, J-Dog, and the BSC's Rock. Uh, J-Dog, that is not his real name either. I can't pronounce his name, so we just agreed that he's going to be J-Dog from now until the end of eternity. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that is, uh, thanks, everyone, for being a patron. If you would like to become a patron, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can follow me on Twitter at the linuxcast. You can join my Discord server, which the link will be in the video description below. You can join Tyler's Discord server, which the link will be in the video description below or the show notes if you want to go do that. Uh, his server is more active than mine, but that is not the case the last few days. Mine has been very mm -hmm. active. Uh, we went from like 70 to almost 100 members of the Discord. So that is it for us this week. Coming up next week, holy hell, we're doing the five app challenge. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I don't think I actually discussed this with you. This is something that uh, I uh, just came up with. Uh, and technically, it's your turn to choose a topic. But we'll do this, and then you can go through and put in some topics uh, when you're yeah. not playing Zero, zero AD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a complete addict. <laughs> uh, you, you need help, man. You need help. You need, you need to find a group or something. And you need to not use... <laughs> it's a good thing Zero AD is not on your phone because you'd be doing it at work. Uh, yep. Anyways, all right. so the five app challenge, this is where it's going to work. We're going to find five apps, okay, they can, don't have to be open source or anything. They have to work on Linux. That's the only rule for that. Uh, but they have to be things that you've never used before or just barely used and share them. For every app that you found that the other person has never heard of or used before, you get a point. The person who has the most points at the end wins. Okay. So, so you're going to need to do a little prep work for this and I will have to do a little prep work for this as well. So find some apps. Don't put them in the show notes. Leave them, obviously, on a piece of paper somewhere so that we can't cheat. Yep. Because <laughs> we we'll both know that we're both cheating cheaters who cheat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. That's just true. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that should be really fun. And also, just a note, we are still planning on our next like big challenge to be the Rice Wars, where we will both take a window manager and we will rice them side by side, time, the person who gets done fastest wins. Uh, but we haven't figured out how we're going to record it yet. So I'd love to figure out how to do this live. Uh, but I don't know uh, how we would go about doing it yet. So that's something we're going to have to talk about, Tyler, to see if between the two of us we can kind of brainstorm how we'd go about doing that. Um, no. I mean... We could use something like a, like a, a screen sharing, like a screen or a, like one of those things where you like SSH into someone else's computer. And so you could no. like rice my computer, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it, we won't be able to do it side by side. Maybe what we do is just do a simple, simply like I, I rice mine and time it. And then you rice yours and time it. And then we'll, whoever went that way instead of doing it side by side. I don't know. We'll have to talk about it. Anyways, for that is uh, it for us this week. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.